Are you interested in learning how to photograph fireworks? Of course you are. Why else are you here? If you don't want to screw up taking pictures of fireworks for the upcoming holiday, here's what you need to do. Before we get into it, if you haven't already, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you never miss out on exciting photography tips and tricks. A fireworks show only happens a few times a year and only lasts about 5 to 15 minutes, so it's important to be ready to capture the magic during that precious amount of time. Some notable opportunities to photograph fireworks include New Year's Eve, if you can get above Times Square, Macy's 4th of July, which now includes a drone show. Many places in the U.S. has started opting for drone only as a way to be quieter and more environmentally friendly, but New York City did both. Astoria, Queens also has a big 4th of July fireworks show a few days before, usually the end of June and the New York City Marathon's opening ceremony. That one's my favorite. Every summer in mid-June, the New York Philharmonic Concert in Central Park has an anticipated event that draws classical music lovers from all over the city. The world-renowned orchestra performs for free on the Great Lawn. After the performance, fireworks go off in Central Park. Coney Island also has a fireworks show every Friday around 9 p.m. during the summer that lights up the beachfront skyline. Since the subject is moving light, it's going to be a long exposure. Long exposure photography, otherwise known as slow shutter or shutter drag photography, is a technique that involves keeping the camera shutter open for a longer period to capture motion blur. A tripod is an absolute must. Your shutter will be open for an extended period, so even the slightest shake can blur your image. To prevent any camera shake when triggering the shutter, there are a few options. You can use a shutter release remote on your camera's timer. Personally, I prefer setting the timer or using the in-camera interval function. To capture the shots, you'll want to be in full control, so shooting in manual mode is essential since the shutter speed will be open for a while. Be sure to set your camera files to RAW for maximum post-processing flexibility. Also switch to manual focus. The last thing you want is your camera struggling to focus on the subject. If you're using a Sony camera like me, the focus peaking function can be your best friend. Turn off noise reduction so that it doesn't take forever for the image to generate in camera. Every second counts. Now, these camera settings are just suggestions. I always say sharing camera settings is kind of useless because the light in your environment will be different than mine. However, these are general starting points and the rest is experimentation. Ideally, keep ISO low at 100. An aperture is preferred to be between 5.6 to 8 so that the details are sharp throughout the whole scene. Shutter speed is what you'll be playing around with. Start from one second and go longer until you get the desired exposure. That's really it. Once you know how to do long exposure photography in any setting, it's just about practicing until you get what you like. Now go off and enjoy your night. See you in my next video.